Toby's Journal, April 5th, 1990. So I asked my daddy to buy me this journal. He's always been a great father, even though he isn't the same after my mom died. He was always big on teaching me how to write and stuff. He said words are the most important thing ever. He writes books for a living, so I guess he kind of wants me to do it too. He acted pretty happy when I told him I wanted to write stuff down. So he bought me this really cool diary with like a leather cover. I was five when mom had the heart attack that took her away from me and dad, but I still remember her pretty good. I'm nine now, but I still miss her. I start to forget her face sometimes, but we have plenty of photo albums and stuff that I look at a lot. My daddy gets really sad sometimes, and I even hear him crying at night. He's tried to date a little, but he always says that nobody can compare to mommy. It would be weird if he met someone though. I mean, would I have to call her mom, even though she'd just be some lady? I still want dad to be happy, even if it would be awkward for me. I didn't really want this diary to write about the sad stuff, but I've heard it's good to put that kind of thing down to help folks deal with them. Still, that's not why I asked my daddy for it. The thing is, some weird stuff happens at night sometimes. I mean, I guess it's not weird stuff, as much as just a weird thing. It only happens every couple of weeks and sometimes only once a month, so I suppose it's not really a big deal. It's been happening since before my mom died, but it freaked me out at first. I guess I was just a dumb kid the first time I saw it, but I'm older now and I know it's not normal. I started to ask my dad about it, but it sounded nuts when I said it out loud, so I told him I was just playing. It's like a bridge that leads away from my bedroom window. It kind of reminds me of those wooden ones that you see in the woods, but it's crazy long. The first time I really looked at it, I was a bit scared because it wasn't there before, and then it was. It looks like I could just open my window and walk across it. But what if it vanishes while I'm on it? I don't want to splat onto the ground or anything, but I really want to see where it goes. It just appeared the other day, so I guess it won't come back for a bit. I'll write more when it does. May 2nd, 1990. The bridge came back last night. I wasn't feeling good, so I didn't even go look at it. I could see it out the window though. It made sounds this time too. I have epilepsy or something, but I can't really say it right. It makes my body do weird things sometimes, and I kind of black out after. My daddy says I have some other problems too, but I don't really know. I gotta take a bunch of pills every day, and some of them make me feel a bit dizzy, but daddy says I gotta take them. None of that stuff was what was wrong with me last night though. I think I got a cold or something. For some reason, my daddy gets really worried about me when I have a bug of any kind. He says I have a broken um, a moon system or something like that. I hate when he uses big words. I think he makes them up sometimes. I don't feel good at all though. Maybe I'll feel better next time the bridge comes. September 14th, 1990. I feel better now. I have another pill I gotta take, but the doctor said it'll help me fight off inflections. I haven't seen the bridge in a long time. I don't know if it got bored waiting for me to get out of the hospital. I guess I wouldn't want to wait around for someone if it looked like they'd moved away. It's okay though. My daddy started talking to one of the nurses from the hospital. They laughed a whole lot and she kept touching his arm. He talks to her on the phone a lot and they've been going out to dinner sometimes too. She's a nice lady though. It's kind of weird to see him holding hands, but daddy looks really happy. It might be weird if they get married, but I don't mind. Okay, well, I'm gonna go play now. I can't write on you all day, diary. October 29th, 1990. Halloween is almost here. I'm so excited. Daddy says I can't trick or treat for too long because it's kind of cold outside and he don't want me to get sick again. I bet I can talk him into letting me stay out longer though. Nurse Mandy is going to be there too and I know she's a sucker for my puppy dog eyes. She really is a nice lady though and she's been at the house a lot lately. I thought I heard her arguing with daddy the other night but he told me they were just watching a scary movie and it made her scream a whole lot. 
I asked him if I could watch the movie too, but he said it was only for grown-ups. I got to watch some kind of scary movies, but they were only kid scary. Nickelodeon has been playing some silly spooky cartoons, but they're kind of fun. They played the Garfield Halloween one, and I like that one a lot. It's even got ghost pirates. They kind of scare me though. I guess they're supposed to be scary, so I don't mind. I don't really like the singing parts, but it's still my favorite. I do like the Charlie Brown one too, but it hasn't come on yet. So, the bridge came back last night again. I really wanted to open the window and climb out onto it this time, but it still makes me nervous. I stayed up all night to see how long it stayed there, but I ended up falling asleep after a while. It was there for a really long time though. I don't know when I conked out, as Nurse Mandy says, but I know the bridge was there for hours before I did. I really want to go out there soon, but I don't want to miss Thanksgiving or Christmas if it goes away before I can come back. It would really suck if I got to the other end and it vanished. I'll make sure to wear my watch when I do go on it though. If it takes like hours to get across it, maybe I'll just turn right back. I know my daddy would worry if I was gone too long. Nurse Mandy's gonna order pizza soon, so I'm gonna take my shower before it gets here. I sure am hungry. December 23rd, 1990. It's almost time for Christmas. I am crazy excited. I've been super good this year, even though I punched Ben, the kid next door, in the mouth last week. He was making fun of me because I'm homeschooled, and he called me handicapped. I don't know what that means, but Dad said it was a shitty thing to call me. I'm not supposed to say words like that, but I don't think it counts if I write them. Even though I didn't get it, it still made me mad, and I socked him in the face. He's like a couple of years older than me, but he cried like a baby. I know it was mean and I shouldn't have done it, but my daddy just laughed about it. He told me Santa would forgive me because I was sticking up for myself. I hope he's right. I've been working really hard to be extra super good this year. I really, really want a Super Nintendo. I guess they make them at the North Pole, but I hope I've been good enough to get one. Daddy says he has a good feeling about it, but he said he can't make promises or anything because Santa can be unpredictable or something. Anyway, the bridge came back like three times since I wrote it here last time. I didn't go on it though. I really wanted to that last time. I even opened my window to get a better look, but I was too scared to get on it. I hit the wood with my hands and it is really real. I mean, it feels like it's there anyway. Next time it comes back, I might get on it if I'm not too chicken. It kind of sounds like it talks a bit. I mean, I guess it's not really talking words, but I think it wants me to walk on it. I'm going to do it for sure, but not until after Christmas. It's only two days left and I am crazy excited. February 20th, 1991 My daddy's getting married to Nurse Mandy. It's still kind of weird, but he's happy. He lets me call her Mandy though. It'd be crazy weird to call her mommy. I mean, she's a nice lady and she buys me a lot of cool stuff, but it just don't feel right to call her mom. I got my Super Nintendo. It's so cool and Mandy and Daddy play on it with me. I still have fun when it's just me playing, but it's cool when they join in too. I actually went on the bridge last night. I was gonna go last month when it showed up, but it was only a couple days after Christmas and I got a lot of really cool stuff. I got Final Fight, Super Mario World, and F-Zero with my Nintendo. I got some Ninja Turtles, some Transformers, and some Star Wars toys too. Anyway, so the bridge was pretty long. I felt like I was walking forever. I almost turned back a couple of times, but I was brave and I kept going. What was really scary was it looked like I was in outer space when I was on it. Like I didn't even see my street underneath me. All around me, it was stars and purple and blue clouds and stuff. It was really cool looking, but I'm glad the bridge had railings because I would have fell off for sure. It was really hard to keep my eyes on the road, like daddy says when we're in the car. There was just so much cool stuff all around me. I kept looking up and down and everywhere. So when I got to the end, after walking for like a whole hour, there was just a round patch of grass with a guy sitting at a table. 
there was still space all around us, but there was also a weird looking lake beside the round field thing. It had another guy sitting on a boat, but I couldn't see what he looked like because he was wearing a hood and didn't really look at me. He kind of scared me a little, but the other guy at the table was a really nice old man. He had a long beard and even super long hair that was tied up behind his head. He kind of looked like he was Santa's brother or something, but he didn't wear a red suit or nothing. He wore a weird gown or something that looked a bit like my dad's bathrobe. I kind of wondered if he'd got out of the shower before I showed up. Maybe he was swimming in the shiny lake that the boat was on. He was a bit weird, I guess, but he was real nice and asked me to play a game with him. I asked him what kind of game, because my daddy warned me about playing games with strangers, but it was just board games. I asked him what he had, and he said whatever I wanted. It was crazy, because I didn't see any boxes or nothing. I asked him if he had hungry hippos or sorry, because I'm really good at those. He reached under the table and pulled them both out. It was wicked cool because I didn't even see him there before. So he said he only had time to play one, but he told me that I'd have to go with him if I lost. That kind of scared me because I didn't want to leave my daddy in Super Nintendo, but I had a good feeling I could beat him. He sounded smart and stuff, but I am awesome at Hungry Hippos. I totally kicked his butt. He didn't even have a chance. He actually looked happy that I won and he smiled real big. His teeth were super white for being such an old man. They were probably falsers or something, but they looked real. So he said goodbye and told me that I should get going too. I ran back across the bridge, but coming back to my house went way faster than going away from it. Anyway, it was pretty neat, but I was happy to get back to my room. My body feels tired a lot, but it didn't feel like that when I was on the bridge or when I was hanging out with the old man. As soon as I got back through my window, I got crazy sleepy though. I just flopped into my bed and I fell right to sleep. It was a pretty cool time, but I don't know if I'll go back next time. September 6th, 1991 This is really weird. I went back on the bridge when it came back a month after that last time. I wasn't going to go because my body's been feeling really bad. But I remember that I felt really good when I went out there. I played Monopoly with the old man this time because I'm really good at that too. And the game went on for a really long time, like super crazy long. I still kicked his butt. But when I got back to my bedroom, it wasn't my bedroom. The bridge hadn't changed directions or anything, but it took me to a hospital. I was really tired when I got through the window and I just fell into the bed that was there. But when I woke up, it was like six months later. My daddy and nurse Mandy came running in when I woke up and they said I'd been in a comma or something. That's weird because my dad taught me all about commas when he was teaching me how to write, but he never told me I could catch one. He said it was a different kind of comma, but I still don't get it. He told me I had a really bad epileptic seizure or something, and that's what made me have a comma. I told him about the bridge, and he said I don't need to go on it anymore, even though he don't believe me. He said it was probably a product of my imagination or a weird dream I had, but I shouldn't go out there anyway. I told him how it made my body feel better, but he still said no. It kind of sucks, because I really like the old man who plays the games with me. And I don't want him to think I'm mad at him or anything. I guess I won't go again though. I don't want to make my daddy cry again. He hasn't done that since he married Nurse Mandy, but he was crying like a baby when I woke up. I told him I was sorry, and he said it wasn't my fault, but I still felt kind of bad. I got this diary to write about the weird stuff, so I don't know if I'll write anymore. I do kind of like it, but most of the stuff I do is too boring to write about, I guess. I just got back home today, but I wanted to write this stuff down before I forgot. Daddy and Mandy are waiting for me to play Super Nintendo with them, so I'm going to go do that. June 17th, 1992 I'd almost forgotten about my old diary until I found it under the bed. We're moving to a new neighborhood, but my dad's not letting me help much with boxing stuff up. 
I still grabbed a couple of boxes to pack up some of my things though. He's been pretty busy with a move, so I don't want any of my stuff to get lost or messed up. I turned 11 last week, and my spelling is a lot better now. I read through what I'd wrote before, and I didn't even realize how bad it was. I still have trouble with some of the bigger words, but I'm getting better. My body feels a lot worse these days though. I guess that's why dad doesn't want me helping much with a move. My epilepsy has been a little better lately, but my immune system is having more trouble now. I had to get a bunch of tests after my six month coma and the doctors discovered I have leukemia or something. I have to get these awful treatments and they make my body feel even worse. My dad says the town we're moving to is closer to a facility that can help me more than the doctors here. I hate all the tests and treatments, but Mandy says they're only to help me feel better. But they just make me feel like crap. I kind of feel bad that we're having to move to a new town just for me. Dad says he does his work from home anyway, but Mandy is going to have to work at a whole new hospital. She says she don't mind, but I still feel bad. I guess it'll all work out though. At least I'm homeschooled, so I don't got to worry about being awkward around other kids. The bridge has still been showing up every month or so. I did what dad asked and never got back on it. I really wanted to when I've been feeling rough though. I guess I won't have to worry about it when we move. It took me to the hospital, but I don't think it'll know where to follow me to the new house. I wonder if the old guy's mad at me for not coming to see him anymore. I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm going to finish boxing this stuff up now. I may write again when we get to the new house. November 16th, 1992. So, we've been at the new house for a couple of months now. It's pretty nice, but my bedroom's on the first floor now. My dad said I'm too weak to have to go up and down the stairs. I guess he's right. I feel really bad lately. I couldn't even go trick-or-treating this year, which really sucked. Even though my room is right next to a big tree, the bridge still found me again. It's really weird how it just cuts the tree short, but it's a full tree again by morning. I really wanted to climb out there last night. Everything hurts now. The new doctors have been trying a bunch of new stuff, and I still have to get the awful treatments too. I used to be scared of needles. They'd always make me cry, but they don't bother me anymore. Mandy says I'm a pincushion now. It's kind of funny, and the way she said it makes me laugh but I just want to be a normal kid. I see the neighborhood kids playing out in their yards, but I don't ever get to leave the house anymore, unless it's to go to the doctor. I just wish I could be like the other kids sometimes. I have plenty of toys and stuff that other kids don't got, but I want to be able to run around too. I guess I shouldn't whine about it. Things could always be worse, my dad says when I'm feeling down. I bet I could run on the bridge though. I think I'm going to take a nap. March 8th, 1993. I went on the bridge again last night. I know I'm not supposed to, but I just wanted to not hurt for a little while. It was nice to see the old man again, and he seemed really happy to see me too. He kind of looked a little sad, but he wasn't mad at me for staying away. What was super amazing this time was my mom was there. Well, she wasn't like there there, but the old man made it so I could talk to her through the table we usually play the games on. I guess that sounds kind of weird, but that's what happened. The table's round, and it's usually just a solid piece of wood, but he made it do some cool stuff. He like dipped his finger into the top of it, and it turned to a kind of wood-looking liquid when he did. He swirled it around and it turned into super clear and shiny water. After a few minutes, my mom's face appeared in it. She could see me too. I knew it was her right away, even though I don't look at the photos much anymore. She started crying when she saw me, and I did too. I know I'm older now and I shouldn't cry anymore, but I did. I could hear her voice, but it sounded like she was really far away. The old man said we can only talk for a couple of minutes, but it was amazing. I'd forgotten how much I missed her. After I had to say goodbye, 
The old man said we didn't have time for a full game, but we still kinda had to play something. He said it's part of the rules, whatever that meant. He just pulled out a deck of cards and sat it on the table that had turned back to wood. He told me high card wins, so I just grabbed the one on top. He split the deck in two and grabbed the next one down. He only had a three of diamonds and I had a six of spades. He laughed and told me I got him again and I laughed too. I gave him a hug before I left because I still felt bad for staying away. He told me that folks don't normally do that here, but he didn't mind. I waved goodbye and I went back home. As soon as I got back to my room, my body started hurting again and I got back in bed. It was really weird because as soon as I lay back down and closed my eyes, some guy pushed my eyelids back open and shone a flashlight in them. I hadn't even seen anyone else in my room, but my dad and Mandy were in there with the other guy with the light. The guy was a paramedic, my dad said. He told me I had an episode, whatever that means, but I told him I just got back. I didn't want to tell him I went on the bridge again, but I kind of had to. He wasn't mad though, he started crying again, and I had to go back to that stupid hospital. I'm gonna be here for a few days, but they let me bring my diary so I could write stuff down. My dad wanted to read it, but I told him it's private. I'm hooked up to some weird flashy machines, and I got needles stuck in me again. But I got a TV and my own room all to myself. I wonder if dad could bring my Super Nintendo. There's not a whole lot of channels on the TV. I'm going to ask him. December 12th, 1993. It's snowing outside. I really wish I could go play in it, but I'm back in the hospital again. Stupid hospital. I hate it so much. My grandparents came to see me yesterday and they kept crying and stuff. Of course, them crying made me cry and I didn't even know what I was crying about. My dad's been staying here with me. He sleeps in another room though. The doctor said I can't have folks in here for too long because I can get inflections easy. I did get to bring my Nintendo with me and a couple of other toys. I've been here for a while this time. I guess it's not too bad, but I don't think I'm going to be home for Christmas. I wonder if Santa will bring my presents here or I'll have to wait until I get back home. Maybe dad or Mandy can bring them to me. It hurts me too much to move nowadays, but I bet I can still unwrap a present like a champ. My hair fell out. I was upset about it for a while, but I guess it's okay. It was hard to wash it when I was in the hospital last time, and it would get itchy sometimes. My head gets really cold without hair. That's really weird, but Mandy said I look handsome with a bald head. That's kind of weird too. The bridge has been outside the window the whole time I've been in here. I keep wanting to go out there, but I don't know if I can with all these machines hooked up to me. I don't even know how to open the window here. I guess I don't need to go out into the cold though. I never really paid attention if it was cold or hot on the bridge. I guess I'm going to go back to sleep now. It's hard for me to stay awake too long these days. Maybe it's all the medicine they keep giving me. I really am tired though. December 26th, 1993. Santa must have come to the hospital. I had so many presents when I woke up Christmas Day. I had to get my dad to help me open them because I'm really weak now. I got some new games for my Super Nintendo though. Me, Dad, and Mandy played a lot yesterday. It was a lot of fun, but I got tired out pretty fast. I stuck it out though. I hadn't seen Dad smile much for a while now. Him and Mandy were both having such a good time, I didn't tell them I was feeling bad. I think I'm about to go to the bridge again. It kinda looks different now. It's like it's brighter in a way. It just got shiny a few minutes ago, but it's kinda calling out to me in a weird kinda way. There's someone on it. They're walking up to the window. That's never happened before. It's my mom. Mommy's out there. It's really her. I'm going to go out there now. I'm sorry I can't write anymore, but she's knocking on the glass. I'll write more tomorrow. I'm so happy. The 
That was the final entry in Toby's diary. We lost him the day after Christmas, back on that snowy night of 1993. He'd suffered for so long, and the pain of losing him before he even had a chance to really live still brings tears to this day. He already had epilepsy and a pretty severe immunodeficiency before he got hit with leukemia. We knew he didn't have a chance. Even with all the pain he suffered through, he was always such a happy kid. My wife Mandy had only just come into his life, and she loved him like he was her own. There was something about him that just brought joy to anyone who met him. I can't even describe how much it hurt when he passed. Mandy and I brought a daughter into this world in early 2002. I worried I'd grown too old to raise another child, and I was still haunted by the loss of my first, but Gracie made me feel young again. She was lucky enough to have been born happy and healthy. It was she who brought me back to life again after I lost my son. She was just as wonderful as her brother, and we made sure she got to know him, though they would never meet. She would even kiss his picture before bed sometimes. I lost my wife to a stroke two years ago. It was sudden and heartbreaking, but we had a good life together, even through the more trying times. She stood by me when my son's death brought me close to the edge, and I miss her so much. My life has had its share of wonderful and terrible times. As I approach my 64th year on this earth, I believe I have little time left myself. I got diagnosed with stage 3 lung cancer a year or so before I lost my wife. It's been a downhill battle for the last year, but I've come to peace with it. I've had to bury two wives and the son I adored with my whole heart. I think I'm ready for whatever lies ahead. My wonderful daughter has been attending college for the last two years, but she's currently flying out this way. Unfortunately, I do not believe I will be around to see her this last time. For the last week, a bridge has stood outside the window of my hospital room. I'd always believed it was just a fantastical tale created by my son's incredible imagination. But I know what it means now. As I sit here, staring out the window, I can see three figures in the distance, walking along the bridge towards me. I'm not scared anymore. I'm leaving Gracie a note to apologize to her for not being able to see her again. I know she has a wonderful life ahead of her, and my only regret is that I will not be able to watch her become that incredible woman I know she'll be. I'll ask her to upload these final words to serve as a message from my beloved Toby. Should you ever see a bridge outside your window, don't be afraid. Nothing ever ends. Not really.